All right. So my name is Indra, and I'm here to talk about this thing. I made it with uh, a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Henrik. Uh, he's not here today, but if you want to imagine what he looks like, he's got a big red beard. Uh, I'll show you some photos in a few slides. The thing is that this box has been way up into, like way above the clouds, and then it fell back down onto the earth, and we recovered it, and uh, this is a story about that, you know, how that went about. And the thing is that in the early 2010s, a lot of nerds started sending all sorts of tech trash into near space. And it was old cell phones with hacked serial interfaces, uh, Arduinos, and all sorts of amateur electronics that they would wire together and basically uh, send up into the air with a weather balloon. The reason why they did this was that they could actually reach um, the stratosphere, which is between 10 and 50,000 meters altitude. And if you have a camera attached to that, you can get some really amazing footage. We really wanted to do this ourselves. We wanted to get our own pictures so we could brag on the internet, which is very important. I'm a software guy, he's a hardware guy, and we figured we could do something together. So we bought a balloon and we got a lot of stuff ready, and then basically just four years passed and nothing happened. <laughs> That's usually how projects go. Uh, and so, four years later, we sort of reconnect I'm in a different part of the country, we're not talking as much. Um, he's got a girlfriend that he's moved in with and he's gonna have a child and we're realizing that we don't have a lot of time. So we have to, um, to, to uh, set some new objectives and get started to, to actually be able to finish this. So we set some goals that we want to make everything from scratch. No old cell phones and no, we didn't want to follow the same recipe that everyone else was doing. We wanted to reach 30,000 meters altitude and we wanted to be able to recover it and finally prove that the Earth is flat. <laughs> and this is the device that we made, or rather Henrik made, because he is a hardware genius. Uh, I made the, the bird. Uh, so this is basically two devices based on the same PCB card. Um, and it's got a GPS module, a logging module, so that we can keep the position stored locally on the card if we lost contact. It has uh, a GSM module to send text messages, a LoRa radio to communicate with us back on Earth. And also, as a backup, it had a beam signal that we could use so that if we were to approach it physically, we could point out the direction in which to go. In addition to that, we needed a lot of stuff back on Earth. We set up everything ourselves, servers with APIs, web apps. Uh, we made an Android application to uh, act as, a, as an SMS gateway and a lot of scripts and hacks to make all of this to, 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 to basically work and, and talk together in a decent way. And the basic idea was to use LoRa as the main transport for communication. Uh, you may know LoRa as an IoT protocol that's basically for use in wide area networks where you would have multiple gateways uh, put around a city and they would act as a gateway that would relay the message to another network, typically the internet. But in our case, we wanted to use the same technology, but we couldn't use the wide area network because we were basically tens of thousands of meters up in the air. So we wanted to use LoRa, but as um, with a point-to-point -point radio. So the Munin device, as we called it, would send directly to our own gateway and then send the data to our private network. And the idea was that when we had clear line of sight, LoRa would be the main transport, um, and as the payload will descend and go behind vegetation and buildings, uh, we would no longer be able to contact it directly. Then the GSM module would take over and send text messages with the position. So we would have contact 100% of the way. We also had the web application where we could track it live. Um, and we also had friends and colleagues uh, who were following live as it was happening. And for those who are unfamiliar with weather balloons, um, it's basically just a huge latex balloon that you inflate with helium, and then you have a parachute attached to it. And of course, the payload. And what happens is basically that the, the balloon will um, ascend until a point where it will just uh, keep inflating and, and increase in size until it explodes. And the payload will start falling, which will cause the parachute to, to open and hopefully make the payload land carefully back on Earth. And if you're lucky, you might even be able to find it afterwards. We had a GoPro knockoff camera on board because we wanted to get some really cool video footage. 
Uh, we didn't want to splurge on a proper original GoPro because we weren't really sure if we would be able to actually recover it. Here's just a few photos from the final preparations. We basically just stayed up all night. Um, we wrote a few lines of code just minutes before we launched it, basically, and um, we, um, we were pretty confident, if not, we were pretty confident that it would be okay. And on the final launch day, um, we're smiling, and we're always wearing protective goggles, very important. We're smiling in this picture, but actually, it didn't really go all that well. Like, we messed up a lot of stuff. And the most, like, the worst thing we did was probably to pierce the balloon, which is the worst thing that can happen to a balloon, basically. <laughs> and to, to make sure that it didn't, like, it was losing a lot of helium. Um, so we had to duct tape it, layers and layers of duct tape, and then we just had to rush to, to get it up before it lose too much helium. We also had way too much helium in it, probably like one kilogram of excess lift, which is a lot. And the GPS module uh, seemed to stop working above 10,000 meters. So basically, what happened was that it would go up and ascend to some point around 10,000 meters. We would still be in, in touch with the device. It will sit, still be sending messages to us, but it would have no idea where it was. We would just get the same positions all over again for maybe an hour or so until it was below 10,000 meters again. But it did actually come down again. It did land gracefully. Uh, however, it did land um, on the middle of a mountain, uh, basically in a swamp. I'm going to show you some pictures of the recovery. Um, the most fun part was probably tracking it. Uh, we drove around following it. We had an antenna stuck on the top of the roof of the car. And then we could sit with a laptop inside the car and basically just see as it was coming down on the map. And we could just see getting closer and closer uh, to the swamp um, that was like between, there was a huge forest, there was the swamp, and then there was a lake. So the best of the three options was, was actually the swamp. So we were actually hoping it would land there. As we were getting closer to it, we were using the beam signal to sort of find the direction of the device, which was kind of useless, but it made some really fun you know, beep noises, so we kept <laughs> using it. And as we got closer, we could see something in the distance, um, something red and white over there, and that's actually the parachute. And as we got closer, we could find it all laying out in perfect glory. Quite happy. Like, you can't really tell from the photos, but it's really wet. Like, it, getting there was uh, a real pain. But at least we didn't land over uh, in the trees there. And we didn't land in the lake, so we're quite happy about that. On the left side, you can see the parachute. On the middle side, you can see the remains of the balloon. And on the right side, you can see this box here. So we rushed over to it, because we really wanted to see some of the amazing video footage that we had captured with uh, the camera. This is what we dreamed about. This is what we got. <laughs> so basically, the, the SD card was full of corrupt files. We were never able to recover it, so we don't have any video or any sort of documentation from the, the actual journey. I said that we did use a lot of duct tape. This is basically all that was left of the balloon when we recovered it, a big chunk of duct tape. But in the end, we did probably reach around 22,600 22, meters. Um, and the reason why we know that is that we had some barometric pressure sensors on board. So um, we're not, we can't say it with 100% certainty, but we probably reached about 22,600 meters. And we also reached about minus 35 degrees Celsius, which probably killed off the, the camera. But we did uh, stay in touch with the device for 100% of the time. Henrik has a kid now, and we're best friends again. And in conclusion, if you want to reconnect with a long-lost friend, you should start a project. It's a great way to get, especially for guys who don't talk much, you, you'll have something to talk about and argue about a lot. Always use original GoPro cameras. <laughs> don't skimp out on the cheap cameras. Avoid sharp scissors when working with helium balloons. And finally, we don't have any evidence that proves otherwise. So as far as we're concerned, the Earth is flat. Thank you.